Hey everyone, it's Darlene and I'm here to do a reading for you today. Let's see what deck do I want to use. This one. Yeah, this one. Um, bringing in your loved ones or deceased loved ones or ancestors. And as you can see, I'm back um, in the city here and I set up and hopefully you can see the cards better here. And everything is good with the sound. So today I'm bringing you through um, two people. Uh, uh, two, well technically three generations. So let me pull a few cards here and I'll talk about them. If you do like this reading or this kind of reading, I'd be very appreciative if you'd hit that like button because that helps to push the message out to other people. Even if this is not your story, it will help it find its way to the family that it's meant to uh, be for. So thank you. Thank you all for being here. Okay, so it's in this reading. I'm having um, a lovely time visiting with these two ladies today that are coming through. They are mother and daughter. And the reason I said three generations is because there's the... I'm going to say great-grandmother age lady and then the grandmother age lady that have crossed over and then the son who is, is for uh, the message is for him apparently or his family uh, that is still here so three generations but the two that have passed over are these two lovely ladies and they um, I mean they just have this warmth about them is is a best word I can think of. They've got these sweet smiles and they're just lovely people, humble people, uh, ladies. And so I'm going to talk about them a minute and then I'll put some more cards out. Uh, they, I believe it was the grand, the great grandmother, I'm, that for ease of my talking about these ladies, I'll call one the great grandmother and one the, the grandmother. It could be grandmother and mother, just so you understand. That's really actually, that's more accurate, the grandmother and the mother, and then this is the son, but the son is old enough to have his own children. He's like in his 40s or 50s, so I hope this is not too confusing. Anyway, all right, so uh, the older lady is in a wheelchair she's showing me uh, she's in a wheelchair and the daughter is pushing her in the wheelchair and they are just like these two sweet peas in a pod they just genuinely love each other they were very very close in life um, just two sweet genuinely sweet people and she's showing me um, so this is how they help you discern if this is your ancestor or not a dog that belonged to the older lady who's in the wheelchair and the dog looks like to me now I'm not great on dog breeds but it looks to me like a golden retriever because the hair is about that color and it's kind of long like that um, and this dog was devoted to this older woman now they're calling him they're referring to him as Shaggy so I don't know if that could have been the dog's name or it could just been an endearing term where you, they would say something like, you shaggy old dog, you know, come here and <laughs> whatever, whatever, you know. So it could have just been like that, but they, they were very specific. They were referring to him as shaggy. Um, and also they're, they're telling me a story. They're actually showing me a story from my childhood and of course, to be a good reader, you have to have lots of life experiences. So that's um, one that they're pulling out of my bag. So I'm, I'm going to just hold the cards here while I while I tell you the story. When uh, I, I, and I'm, I know you can't see my face, but you can see my old wrinkly hands, and you know I'm I got some years on me, so um, no secret there. But I'm old enough to remember this, and that's why they're showing you this picture. They're showing me with my grandmother, and they're telling me that this older woman used to sew. She would make dresses for the daughter. And what she's showing me is a picture, again, from my childhood of they would make 
dresses from flower sacks. And for all you young people who have no idea what I'm talking about, I don't, you'll have to Google it, but I believe it, I don't remember if it came from the Depression or from the war. I think it was from the World War. I'm not certain. When things were rationed and things were hard to get. And their flower, I don't know if it was one flower company, and I'm talking about flower that you bake with, okay? Flower company, one, I don't know if it's just one or many, but they, to help people out, because the times were poor, right? They started packaging their flour in sacks that were made from cloth, okay? But then they said, well, let's make this even better. And they would make them, the cloth was this real pretty, the one, several that my grandmother made for me were um, like a pretty little tiny floral print or something in different, you know, different colors and whatever. And I have a very fond memory of my grandmother making me those dresses. That, those were my pride and joy, you know, when I was a little girl. So that's the memory that they're sharing with me about this older lady. And so I think they're bringing that through because this child would not remember that necessarily because it was her mother, but they would remember the mother talking about that story from the grandmother. So the older lady made the dresses for the daughter and they are now together on the other side. And they're sharing that because during the years they told that story to the family that's left behind. So very, uh, very sweet story there. And, um, <laughs> and a sweet memory for me to revisit. I loved my grandma. You know, I, all but, well, my one side of the family's grandparents uh, for me died before I was born, and I only knew the one set from my mother's side, but one of those died when I was three years old. So really, I only had one grandparent, my mother's mother, that um, I was close with and really, really loved her dearly. Looking forward to seeing her on the other side. Okay, they're telling me to cut, so let's do that. Thank you. Hmm. Okay, all right, thank you. So let me see if there's any other... I'm not certain yet if this message is for this person or it's... Because I've already got some information I haven't shared with you about him. So let me uh, tune in here, y'all. Bear with me one second. I'm gonna tune in or check out or however you look at that. <laughs> okay, let me see here. I feel like this king of cup rep represents the gentleman that I'm seeing in my mind's eye. Uh, although the gentleman I'm seeing has it's, his hair is starting to gray, but not that gray. Uh, he's, as I said, in you know mid forties, could be fifty. And she's describing him to me that when he was younger, he was painfully shy. You know, very intelligent, but painfully shy. And he um, had a hard time, you know, socializing and being around even sometimes the family, but predominantly outside of that, you know, friends and social situations and girlfriends and all that. And so he spent a good part of his life being solitary because of that. Uh, however, whatever his profession was, he, he has done well for himself. Um, let me see here. Yeah, they're saying, there's, I don't believe he married. I believe that he is still single. He might have been, uh, he might have had some romances along the way, but they're showing me at least currently that he is single. Uh, so they're verifying that. I, I felt that might be the case. I was hoping because he was old enough to have kids, but I'm not seeing that. Um... Yeah, there's a sad story. Bear with me here while I'm, this comes in here. Yeah, he, they are telling me a little side story about that. There, that he has been in love. He was, um, he was in love with a woman. 
but apparently this woman wanted to travel more and I think that he because of his well he's saying it was his job but he's admitting the truth was really because I didn't want to be away from home that much I didn't want you know, he again going back to his somewhat of a you know, not only he's painfully shy, but his um, social awkwardness around strangers, which you have to deal with when you travel, right? Um, and any time they would be in a social situation, he would just want to go run away and hide and be by himself. Um, and again, this man is very intelligent, and he's done well for himself financially. He found something in his work life that he was passionate about. And so he's done very well for himself that way. And I think for a while he was very unhappy, but then he had, so, so I'm speaking of him like he's past tense. He's still here, sorry. So you, the family member who's this, hopefully hearing this message. But they're acknowledging that um, that relationship apparently broke up with this woman for whatever reason, but they're, you know, the story I told um, seems to be the main reason. Um, and in some way you were relieved you loved this woman you cared about her but in some woman some way you were relieved because you're quite comfortable in your own company and honestly i'm like that so i get it i'm not painfully shy by any stretch but but i'm very um not only comfortable in my own company but i enjoy my alone time and many people who are sensitive to energies are of course it's kind of self-preservation for us so that may be part of uh, your story as well that you are just super sensitive and it's difficult to be around other people energy situations because of that um and i think you you got an epiphany about that i think for much of your life that you thought you were uh air quotes broken or that you were something was wrong with you and that you didn't understand why you were so different and you were felt like an outcast because of that and what you've come to realize now is that you yes shyness is a real thing and that was a factor for you but mostly it's because you are extremely sensitive and I'm going to preface that by saying a sensitive. In other words, um, you you pick up on energies around you. You you know like a an empath would, or a uh, I know some people don't like that word. I don't know why. I think it's quite accurate, frankly. Um, you know, you even have intuitive skills that I don't think you've acknowledged yet. I don't think that you've really played with that, so to speak, or explored that or um, acknowledged that part of yourself yet, but I think you're starting to. In fact, you might have even started a practice of uh, meditating or some kind of mindfulness practice where you're going in and um, connecting with yourself and, and your higher self to bring that out more. Because if you guys did not know that, meditation does that for you. Simple meditation, one of the byproducts is that it will cultivate your intuition. So I think that you've had an epiphany that maybe you, um, that was a big part of the situation all along. And so because of that, you're starting to let go and, and deal with the inner, <clears throat> one second. <clears throat> mm, I better drink of water. <clears throat> you're starting to put that burden down is my point. You're starting to put that burden down uh, of being an outcast because of, you thought you were broken. You were understanding and, and starting to understand more that it was because you were so sensitive and it was sort of a self-protection measure for you to do that. <clears throat> um, and now that you're owning that part of you, I see a lot of wishes being fulfilled. I see that you're kind of starting down this whole new road of exploration, I'm going to put it that way, um, with owning more of that part of you. Uh, again, it's just this it's like this epiphany, this aha moment for you where you figured it out, you know, and you realize 
wait a minute, this isn't a bad thing. This can be a good thing. Yep, I see wishes coming true. It's been a long time coming though. This realization was a long time coming, but now you're starting to get excited about, you know, turning this around. In other words, this is, the word that's coming to mind is a pivot point for you. When you had that epiphany, that was a pivot point for you. And now you're starting to realize you're, you're, there's a sort of an inner dialogue with yourself where you're used to, how can I say this? Um, you know how we all have that negative self-talk about ourselves and and you used to do that and now I think you're starting to internally stand up for yourself. You're starting to catch that and start to um, and turn that around and pivot in your mind and make that change that thought into something more positive. This is a good thing to be sensitive. This is a good thing and there's a lot of good that comes from this and you're working very hard at that and having this new mindset and when you do that uh, it causes, you know, this is the judgment card, but it's, you know, it's like a rebirth. It's a, it's an awakening, a rebirth that's coming and, in you know, you're just going to take off. This is going to take off for you. I see that very clearly. You know, you're going to see the fruits of your labor. I think what's going to happen and what I'm seeing, yeah, and the cards just keep backing that up as I go deeper. Um, what I'm seeing is something that I, I was, let me back up and tell you a little story about me. I uh, taught meditation for 25 years, and I've been a meditator personally for 33, I think, years in my life so far. And you, um, it's one of the things that you get to take with you when you leave this world. You can't take your possessions or your family members and all that, and your money and all that, but you get to take with you your cultivation, your spiritual internal cultivation, because you grow spiritually while you're here. And, the, and when you meditate, that really causes a lot of spiritual growth and connection and cultivation and evolution, evolution uh, in your soul and in your being and in your spirit. That you get to take with you. So the point is, when we come back into our next lifetime, you won't consciously remember that, but your soul does. And so when you go through life, just like every day is a new day, is another day, and I go to work and I come home and I, you know, and I do all that over again, you don't realize what you have inside of you waiting for you to tap into. And I think that's what's happening here with this King of Cups. He is now, now that you've turned around and you're starting to recognize uh, and you had this epiphany starting to recognize, wait a minute, I, I think there's more to this than I understood. I think this is just going to take off you because you're connecting with all the accumulation of those uh, past lifetimes where, or one, it could have been one lifetime, but anyway, that past energy of cultivation is what you're now connecting to. And it's like a big storehouse and, and you're just like, suddenly you're able to plug into it. And so that kind of gives you this ability to leapfrog in a sense over people who have never had that in their um, in their past so you're making connections uh, you're having experiences that um, are beyond the typical amount of time that anyone else would have spent doing what you're doing for example meditation and I think you're trying to understand that it's happening pretty fast for you, but you do have, it is my feeling as I'm reading this energy, but you do believe and understand that it's a positive, good thing. You're not afraid of it. You're cool with it. You're just, okay, I know how to do this because you have practiced so much of your life being alone and being with yourself. That's not foreign to you. Whereas a lot of people, and I know this again from teaching meditation classes for 25 years, a lot of people that is very challenging for them to sit down and try to meditate because they're so used to being plugged into the outside world, whereas your journey has been quite the opposite. You're plugged in inside naturally, and so you're able to, it's like, feels almost like flipping on a light switch where you just can, and it's all there for you. So. I hope that makes sense. I hope that was helpful for someone out there. 
and if it was uh, your reading I'm glad it found you and if you guys would please hit that like button and subscribe if that feels right to you because again that helps YouTube say oh well, this content is interesting to somebody so we'll pass it on to other people and that helps get the message to the families that um, that are being read for in these readings Alrighty, well, I think that's it for this reading. Thank you all for listening, and I wish you all many, many blessings. Take care. Bye-bye.